All right, everybody, we are actually past the halfway point of 2024. So let's talk about how to win the second half of 2024. Join us today on the Wandering Without Loss podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 203. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Absolutely. So here today, we're going to discuss three things, three things to empower you to finish strong in 2024. Number one, mindset and paradigm shift. Number two, a year-to-day business assessment. And number three, priority adjustments, and focused intention. Let's dive into it, Matt. That's awesome. We talked in our last episode, 302, a little bit about mindset and paradigm shift and some techniques. uh, And I'm not going to get into all this stuff about the changes, but that are, we're now in effect in some markets where, where it's in effect effectively. It's August 17th, but it seems like most markets are making the adjustment now and they're moving forward. So I think that I want to start out with there's three things that I want you to consider are true. The third one I think is true. I guess we're going to have to see. That is a supposition in my part. The first thing is these changes that came out post NAR settlement, they apply to everyone. Just let that sink in. It's not just you that has to make this adjustment. Right. Everyone that is going to be using the MLS, all MLS participants, real estate agents, have to make this adjustment Okay, to the way we're going to talk about compensation and the fact that there's no longer an MLS co- in the MLS a co-op fee or a guarantee of some kind of compensation that the listing agent negotiated with the seller. That's what changed everybody, right? Number two thing that we can we can really say, and that is a true statement, is there are always going to be people who need to buy and sell in any market. Right. And if you know that and you really believe that and you embrace that, you will make the proper adjustments based on what's happening in your market. And thirdly, I believe, and so do the experts out there that are that are coming from economists and, and the people that forecast what's happening, the real estate market is going to be better in the second half of 2024, specifically interest rates, and we're already seeing that. Okay, Matt, so those are three three truths. Those are my three truths that are going to help you make that mindset, mindset and paradigm shift. So let me just talk about a couple things, and they're in the show notes. I really love the Keeping Current Matters uh, website and blog, and they have some always great articles and infographics. And the one that I am speaking to at this very second is how the housing market, uh, the housing market forecast for the second half of 2024 is going to be better. And they have three points on here. And we're going to put this image in a link to where you can find it in the show notes today. Right, Matt? That's right. So home prices, this is always, this is nationally. So you have to know your market. Home prices are expected to climb moderately. I just talked to Cosmo yesterday about this, and we think it's going to be similar in Vegas to how it's been in the last couple of years at the end, where we might be flat. Our, our sales price has gone up now to 480 effective for, for the July. We think it's going to be 480 It was 475 in June. But I think it's going to stay, and so does Cosmo. He tracks the numbers more. We think it's going to stay kind of flat. Uh, however, everything points to when the interest rates continue as they are coming down, more sales happening, and which... If there's not enough inventory, the prices are going to go up. So it's going to be all good. Mortgage rates forecasted to come down slightly. This is just from about uh, maybe three weeks ago, a month ago, this actual infographic, and things are better than what this is already. So this forecast is saying Q3, the average of Fannie, Mortgage Bankers Association, and NAR saying the uh, the average uh, conventional rate would be 6.83. Well, it's actually a little lower than that today. And then Q4 for 2024, 6.67. It's actually a little bit lower than 6.67. So that's great news, right, everybody? And that just means more people that have been sitting on the sidelines for a year or two are about ready to jump back into the market if they're not already. And home sales are projected to hold steady. Actually, the NAR just put out something for June that overall sales increased about 4.3% nationally. And they have a breakdown of that graph. Uh, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. So just go over to the NAR statistics and you can always stay on top of what's happening and sign up for the alerts so that you can see it. But that's national. 
you, you have to know what's happening locally, but that's a positive sign. It was like 3.4 for the West and maybe a little higher in other areas, but overall 4.3% pending sales up. That's good news because all year we've been tracking below right. uh, previous months and years. And that's a month over month change. So from May to June, it went up 4.3% nationally. And I think it's going to go up higher because of what I just said, the interest rates are coming down. And then we have a quick chart in here that I highly recommend that you use for, and this is all use this for your conversations with people, use this in your newsletters. That's what I do. Talk about it in your videos every month. We talk about what's happening or I do a market report. Include this so you can continue to educate people. Use this in your social media and your videos and so forth. But I love this historic mortgage rate that you can get from Mortgage News Daily. There's a link in the show notes. And what I'm looking at very quickly is the month of July. Yep. And I'm going to say for, from the 2nd of July to the 1st of August, one, two, three, four. There's only four reds, which indicate uh, increase in the in the rate. Everything else was a decrease. And in the last one, two, three, four, five days, we've gone from 6.91 to 6.62. The jobs report just came out as we're recording this today. And uh, it's interesting because it's a little under than what they think, which means the, the, the there's 110,000 new jobs, but I think the unemploy unemployment rate ticked up a little bit, which sadly might be okay for the yeah. rate. I was going to say. Well, really, why that's sad, sad for people, but why, why this all makes sense is that the pressure is on the Fed. The Fed just had their announcement at, that they're going to keep it. Uh, they didn't change anything in this last week when right. they met, but they're kind of indicating it's on the table for September, depending on what the various points, the data points that they collect, which is jobless reports or the jobs report. They look at, obviously, the inflation reports and so forth. But the pressure of the increased interest rates is impacting the jobs and so forth and is impacting some other indicators, which I think is where the Fed is going. They can't wait too long to make changes. There is enough data to maybe make the change. And 90% of, of the experts that track all this think that there will be a, a uh, rate cut on the short-term interest rate in September. Now, all that being said, that's what they were projecting. The mortgage industry already baked that in. That's why for the last five days, the rates have come down. Now, all of this I'm talking about in the top of the show is because I'm comfortable talking about it because I study it. I wasn't always this good at that. When I was a broker, I didn't really know that. I wasn't into this as much. No. But being in the trenches has made me realize how important it is to be an expert. And why I'm leading with this today, everyone, is... You cannot sit on the sidelines any longer. You must be that local market expert, hyper local market expert. Know what's going on in the market as far as properties, what's on the market, but understand how interest rates can impact people and what's happening with that. That's going to bring confidence when you sit down to do these things. So what is the rest of this paradigm shift that you have to make? You have to lean in. It's happened. It's done. There is no more. I'll wait till it happens. It's here now for most of us. And if you're listening and your market hasn't made those changes and changed forms and so forth, they will. And you need to be ready now. You needed to be ready already weeks ago to adjust your mindset. So no time like the present. If you need some tips and strategies, we discuss that in detail in episode 302. Matt can link it in the show notes for you. Went down the three phases of working with the buyer and seller. We talked about what you need to put into your presentations now. And we just talk through common things that are coming up for everybody and how to deal with it. Plus, what do we have coming up? We're going to have a panel of experts and brokers from across the country sharing how they've made changes and the things they're, they're dealing with coming up. Do we have the date for that yet? Yeah, we're, we, we, it will actually drop on the 27th of August. So last week of August. All right. So we're going to keep you updated here on the podcast. So today it's just about taking a look at what, uh, what, how your year's been so far and how to make these, uh, these adjustments right now so you can finish the year strong. So again, it starts with mindset in this paradigm shift. So here's the deal. Very quickly, you have to list the buyer. You just have to list the buyer. You know how to. If you don't, then you know that you, there was a process that you had to be a little bit more prepared and a little bit more on top of it and better presentation skills and be able to go out and cover the paperwork with a seller. It's exactly what you have to do with the buyer now. So I just want you to say, be prepared, provide that value, be confident. And we gave you a lot of tips and strategies. Go watch 302. 
Get comfortable with showing your value and discussing the compensation. It just means that you might have to practice and role play it a little bit. I've been doing that. We're doing that with our team. Just at a team meeting, we talk through. Here's a great opening sentence that you could maybe use of sitting down with a buyer and, and we're going to go through, like I talk about in 302, those stages of what you do and you're getting ready to discuss the changes and then go over the paperwork and get them to sign the agreement. So an opening sentence statement can be, or question can be, hey, Matt, are you aware of the new rules and changes regarding showing homes and agent compensation that applies to all real estate agents now? I love that. Yeah, that's very good. Has anybody talked to you yet about the changes that are impacting the real estate industry right now regarding compensation? Are you aware? Just just stop talking and see what they know. That's going to lead your discussion. And then you can easily jump into the two things that change. And again, we talked about that in 302. Okay. So here's the thing I want to say. Stop over analyzing it. Stop awfulizing it. You know what I yep. mean by awfulizing? Yep. That means your brain goes down this path of people aren't going to sign it. And this is the fears coming up for people who never used buyer brokerage agreements before, uh, which is most people in my market. But there are other people. It's like, whatever, it's business as usual. The only thing that's changed, I always got a brokerage agreement. Now I just have to talk about the fact that it's not in the MLS. We're going to have to put it in the offer and we're going to have to negotiate it. And here's various ways that it can be. But let me show you my value and how I've done it in the past. And this is what we're going to go do. Okay. Stop awfulizing it. And you know what? Carry on confidently, which means just jump in right now. Right now, today, if you are working with some buyers or some leads and you haven't had that discussion, here's your time to go practice. Basically, go back and say, hey, Matt, I know we're, we're about ready to go look at homes or I've been chatting with you about it. But before I can go out and show you homes, I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Uh, but do you know about the changes that, that are impacting all real estate agents across the country? No. No. Or you've heard something. Great. Let me talk to you about that. And that's what we're doing right now with three people that we had started to work with that we haven't started. They're about to come in to show homes. We just basically have, we have one today. We'll go through and we'll sit down and we'll just basically talk about it and then say, before we can move forward and, and show you homes next week, when you come into town, let me walk through what the changes are. And this is how we used to get compensated. This is how we're going to get compensated now. We think it's going to basically flow like it always is. We're just not going to know up front what the seller's willing to contribute, if anything. What was their answer, Jan, to when you asked them, have you heard about that? Hmm? They're your clients. Are you getting uh, more? I was going to it and they would, weren't aware of it. Yeah, that, I was going to say, I would think that would probably be the case more times than not, because people are not as tuned in as we all think they are. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. They're not aware of it. So don't make it more complicated than it is. Right. So just carry on and just start doing it. And then you'll get through it and then you'll realize, oh, I may, I was making the, uh, this way worse than it's going to be, which is what we have the tendency to do if we have a little yeah. fear on everything. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Mindset paradigm shift. We got it. We're moving on. We're just carrying on everybody. Everybody. Remember, when you start to feel the fear go, wow, everybody has to do this. If somebody comes up and says, well, I'm not going to sign that, you work on those objections and say, well, you know. The bottom line is anybody you go talk to is going to have the same discussion. I'm not sure if you heard what I said, but everyone must have an agreement to uh, before they show homes where we talk about what our commissions are and how we're going to get compensated. It's all about transparency, Mr. Buyer. Uh, and this is what this is all about. So, And if they don't want to do it, then don't work with the person. Yeah, Move on. Exactly. Trust your value. You only have so much time in the day to work with buyers anyway. So be confident it's all going to work out. All right, so let's move on to the next thing so, to do. Number two, to ensure that you finish the year strong. And that is to do a year-to-day business assessment. You can't move forward until you really take a look at where have you been this year. And here are, supple, here are a couple steps, a couple things to do, and a couple questions to ask yourself. I recommend you set aside about an hour or so after you're listening to this and really dive into these questions Make your assessment, and then we'll move on to number three, which is all about adjustments. So pull out your 2024 business plan and goals, and I know you have one because if you're yeah. listening to us and you don't have a business plan, what <laughs> is going on? <laughs> what is really going on? Now, you don't have to use the, the, the very easy to use and detailed spreadsheet that we have for you, which is absolutely free right? We have a free mini course. I think it's called uh, Agent Fundamentals Agent in the Business Plan. That's right. Real Estate Fundamentals and Business Plan. You can completely download all of our business planning budgets. I don't know. There's probably like eight or nine downloads that you can get that are going to help you with your business planning. If you haven't done that, it's never too late. Go get it. 
links in the show notes to that free mini course, which is one of the modules of our real estate sales builder program, which we also have in the show notes for you, which is the whole how to run your real estate business like a real business part. So review that and then ask yourself, are you on track? I will, I'm happy to say that my goal, uh, Cosmonize goals were 44 transactions closed. I think he had a lower number and I picked 44 because that's my favorite number. So that my goal, right. 44, I've been visualizing 44 closed transactions and I'm happy to, to say through June, we had 22. There you go. Like spot on. Exactly half. So are you on track or not? What tactics and lead generations and things uh, have been working for you? You know, you all, you always go, what is working? Is that working? I'm going to continue to do it. That's worth it. Um, what, what did I do? Or it could even be like analyzing campaigns, email campaigns, things that you're doing on social. Is any of that working for you? Are you paying for leads? Are you getting returns uh, on that? And then there's a difference between getting leads and whether or not you, because you basically can get leads. I know a lot of agents who spend money and get leads, but then they fail the next part, which is they don't actually follow up with the leads on a consistent basis following a proven system that works leveraging their CRM or whatever their system is to remind them who they need to call today. That's the thing. So what's working, what's got a return on investment, what didn't work. And then I, I think honestly, the most important question to ask is to reflect on what have you not been doing consistently, which I put in the show notes in brackets, lead gen and or follow up question mark, because that's what it is. 100%. And that's what it is for us. We're not consistently, even though we know doing the short form videos and posting them on social media is what generates business for us. We have proven it to ourselves a couple times and mostly in the month of July because we sort of, I think we sort of like took part of July off mainly because of the holidays. We both took a vacation. Uh, it was very hot here. Business slowed down a little bit, but we maybe did that on, uh, you know, we knew that, but we also could see that when you don't post consistently, you don't get business. Now we have been back to our posting consistently to, you know, we we're, I was very happy yesterday. We got three videos up and that's been the first time in probably all, all of July that we, well, it was August, right? So we're back on track where we maybe had three a week as opposed to two or three a day. Um, so guess what happened when we did that, Matt? Yeah, no, no kidding. We, we have leads. We have two or three people all of a sudden that we're working with. So do that assessment, do that self-reflection, get honest with yourself. And I guarantee you that for most people, it's the what hasn't been consistent is the, uh, yeah, you've been busy. I know you've been busy, but have you been putting your energy and time blocks into lead gen and lead follow-up? And only you can answer that. And that brings us to the third step to ensure that you are going to have a great finish to 2024 and set yourself up for 2025 because that is what we're starting to do right now. So it's August. Things you do this month probably are going to close in 2024 unless you have a really long, you know, buy a uh, new build or something. But honestly, as we move on to the rest of the year, we all know as we move into October, and November and December, a lot of that is going to get you set up for a great 2024, which is 100% important. Okay, so everything you do now, all the way through December is going to let you finish the year strong and set you up so you don't have to ramp up come January. Right. So priority adjustments based on your review and assessment of your business so far, the tactics, what you've done well, what you haven't been doing well, what you need to stop doing, and then setting some really clear focused intentions and goals on what you're going to do. And you know where I'm going with this, anywhere I can fit it in. There is no other way to say it. You must do the daily. That is our magic formula. That is the formula I follow every single day that I am working. I have this in front of me all the time, everybody. There it is. Do the daily that's a little sticker. I think we have some things in our shop about this, don't we? we? Do. They can download. Um, I think I, I got a water bottle. I sent it to my sister <laughs> who just oh, got started yeah. in the real estate. I sent her a do the daily package, a WBNL package, uh, Matt. Very good. That's great. So do the daily real quick morning routine. Get up every day. Do something for yourself. Meditation. Take a walk. Get grounded. Get your mindset right. That's how you make the daily mindset shift. 
whatever it is for you so that you can carry on with the day to get to the next two most important things. One to two hours of doing something that's going to generate business for you. You know what you need to do with that. It could be whatever it is in your toolkit that is your deal. Okay, it could, it could be two or three different things. Number three, you have to follow up the leads that you already have. There should be a system for that. You should be logging in every day to your system, your CRM, have your leads, pull them up and figure out who you need to talk to today and have those conversations. Number four is any active clients that you have today. And if you don't have any active clients, put more energy on number two and number three. And then number five should be not your focus. It has to happen, but don't let it consume you. And that's everything else that you do that's not one, two, three, or four, which is all the admin stuff, which is getting ready, getting ready for appointments, listening to this podcast, going to a training class, attending a sales meeting, getting up to speed with what you need to do, uh, managing all your escrows. That's admin time. And just don't make it, let it be 90% of your day, okay? Then finally, track and measure your activities and results. So if you, you don't, if you, you don't know how you're doing, if you don't measure and, and track that. And I just want to point out what I think you need to be tracking. So lead gen, is it time blocked? Do you have it? Like we have content creation on my calendar in the mornings, like seven to seven to eight 30. I have content creation on there five days a week. And that's when I'm trying to knock out and get myself ready. The way we do, way I do it is I'll, I'll get them, my videos edited and get them ready to work on that in the morning. And then I'll have them ready to post throughout the day. There might be times throughout the day that I'll do one. So that's what works for me. Then lead follow up and block is it time blocked? And that's what Cosmo and I are back on track doing, where we get on a Zoom and we talk about our priorities. And then we did it yesterday. We talked about it. We set our priorities. He started making calls and texts. I started while we were on the Zoom, which held us accountable to that. I followed up with leads. We saw where we were with our escrows and all of that. So so we knocked out some of the admin time as well. And then uh, track how many conversations are you having? So if you are not having conversations with people, it's not going to lead to converting them to a real person who wants to buy or sell. And sometimes it's many conversations over time. And that is what the good system and CRM is going to do for you and keep your notes and stay on track with all that. Whenever you're having your lead follow-up sessions, make sure that you are open into your system so you can write your notes and you can schedule your next follow-up. Those are the two key things. Keep your notes, keep it updated when you're having conversations, schedule the next contact right away uh, in whatever system it is that works for you. CRM is the best. Put it on your calendar, whatever it takes. Then it's how many appointments have you set and kept? That's something to track. I have appointments where they kept. Then And then also separately from that, because you could have an appointment where you're not doing a new presentation. So I recommend that you track new buyer and seller presentations. Yeah. New buyer and seller presentations, because then there might be more conversations after that until they're ready to actually go take action. Then, of course, obviously pending transactions and then your closed transactions. And all of that can be on a spreadsheet, which we have as part of the business plan. Uh, you know, we just use a, I have all that, but I put it up into Drive and converted it to a Google Doc. And that, we track everything. Our, our, our uh, now leads that are now to 120 days, 120 plus. Then we have pipeline leads. And then we have other tabs of people that we've maybe had some uh, online conversations with direct messaging on Instagram or TikTok. And that's kind of how we track it. And we move them from up the pipeline and then when they go to pending they go to a pending area you know that's kind of how we do it because that system works for us okay so whatever works for you figure it out and and as we've said in a previous episode whichever that was on crm so the best crm for you or system is the one you use <laughs> so i'm not telling you what you should use i'm right. saying go figure it out and find something that you love that you use every day and you get up and go, thank you so much for being here, all my data, and telling me what I need to focus on today and who I should call, right? So we definitely have some resources. You want to just remind everybody about where they, what they can do to help them with this finishing the year strong, Matt? Absolutely. We already talked about our fundamentals course. You go over to real estate, uh, excuse me, go to wblcoaching.com, go to our freebies page, and there is a uh, agent fundamentals uh, and a business planning uh, free course on there, which really is module one of our uh, real estate sales builder program. So you can check that out over there on our freebies page. Real estate sales builder, I'm telling you, is more than just a business planning uh, or is more than just a, a uh, elementary uh, course. It's got everything you need, no matter what, uh, where you are in the business, or whether you're brand new in the business or you've been in the business for 25 years. Uh, real estate sales builder is going to have some information in there that's going to help you get you on track, help you make sure you have that strong foundation built. 
and um, we'll keep you keep you moving along. There's a lot of other resources on there as well. We have a My Path over there on the freebie, freebies page as well, which does a lot of what Jan just talked about. How you know you in a in a more condensed version, uh, once you have your plan in place, uh, you can track and um, you know make sure you're staying on track. So go check out My Path over there as well over on wbnlcoaching.com. Uh, and those are both actually actually absolute free. Um, um, uh, resources for you over there. And a third one that comes to mind here is our business assessment form. You know, this really is more of like when you're really getting into, you know, you know, either starting a team or, or, or really looking at your business in a whole new, new life. But I'm going to tell you that business assessment form is a great form, no matter where you are too, just to go in and just see if you're doing the things that you need to be doing to keep your business going. So that's over there on that side as well. So a bunch of, I, I love that, Matt. I, def I definitely recommend downloading. That's a free assessment. It's actually the assessment that I use with someone who starts coaching with me, but it's a great tool to do a self-assessment on yep. what are you doing in each of the systems of your business, but it starts with the numbers in your business plan. So it's a great yeah. tool. To use. Hey, and here's another one, actually. I even I sent this out to our, uh, our, uh, our um, WBNL coaching group this morning, the um, agent epic checklist. That's mm. like a 15 page checklist that you can go through to see if you are, you know, where you are and what you have in your church, your little uh, toolkit arsenal. Another great resource to go through and just to see if there might be one or two little things along the path that you're maybe not implementing or maybe you might want to implement to help your business be a little more stable and strong. Maybe I need so, to look at that and make sure there's not anything to add to that. I just yeah, wrote that exactly. down. Actually, I went through it yesterday. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about a couple things too, Jim, because we do need to make a couple of little adjustments along the way. In some okay. Ways. Good stuff. So go over there. Here's what we have out. coming up. I didn't want to jump on that, but I wanted to, if you're still with us and you're wondering where are we going next besides having an amazing panel to discuss the changes, the NAR changes at the end of the month, because by then we'll have been working with it and we'll get some insights from brokers across the country. I decided I had this epiphany. I am going to go back after a couple years now of success with video. I'm going to do a series, at least a two part. We'll see if it needs to have three parts on how to leverage using video. So I want to do a little how to technical stuff, but then I want to really get into what kind of content that you need to be doing, you know, how you figure out what the content is, give you some tips and tricks on how to implement video, because I don't know, so long as we've been doing this podcast, I think we've been talking about video. At the time when we first started, we weren't shorts and TikTok wasn't really in existence. That's right. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying you have to do TikTok. I'm saying short reels on all the platforms work, even YouTube. We're getting more engagement on our YouTube shorts yeah. than we are with our long form video. So anyway, we're going to discuss that. So I've got a, uh, I've got a lot of content on this. I've taught people how to do it. So we're going to do a couple podcasts on how to leverage video and really how to do video. Okay. That's so great. thank That's you for great. listening all the way to the end. Exactly. And this has been episode two. What? Oh, we did that last week too. Um, 303. Uh, you can find all those show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. We're going we'll to have all the information that Jan talked about in there, plus links off to our freebies, links off to the business planning, links off to the courses, all kinds of great links in the show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. Anything else on your mind this week, Jan O'Brien? No, I'm I'm really at peace. I'm we are all good with these cha these changes that already happened in my world. We're just business as usual, and we're back to having fun. It is about your mindset every day. Uh, how who am I going to get to help today? Let me feel empowered. Um, no fear whatsoever. I only have so much time in the day. These are the things that I do, and I know that the plan that I covered today, the way the daily, all those things have been working for me. That is what it works for my team. This is what we do, and it's not going to change. It's only going to get better. If anything, I think it's going to get better. We're going to blow away 44. So yeah. you blow away your goals. We have plenty of time to get that done with the rest of the, the yeah. other half of the year upon us. So, all right, everyone, get up, get out, and be forever wandering, but not lost.